My goodness. Okay. For the purists, I'm using an iPad. Behind you, Jesse, is a black Bible on the seat. It belongs to me. Just so you know, I have one. <laughs> What, what's all, all the dinging about, brother? <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Okay. I'm sorry? You come in, I'm glad. The interlopers on Zoom. Uh, be careful. You might get what you pray for. Um, you can turn while you while I'm doing this. <clears throat> the, uh, the question I ask is, who is important and to whom? Okay, think about that. <clears throat> Mark three, verse thirty-one, and it sort of goes along with uh, what Pastor Darrell just talked about, and we actually talked about this earlier because he talked about something similar on Sunday <clears throat> but this these particular verses I think if we were less spiritual in our lives these would be very offensive because they they cut across a lot of uh, traditional ideas and thoughts in society today or well, maybe not Maybe people have gone beyond all that. But, uh, <clears throat> in verse 31 it says, There came then his brethren and his mother standing without. I don't know what they were without, but they were standing without something. And sent unto him, calling him. They were without Jesus. That was the problem. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who? is my mother or my brethren and he looked around about them on them which sat about him and said behold my mother and my brethren and i i suspect that if you confronted somebody with these the concept of these verses somebody who wasn't spirit filled they'd be very offended because I know just in, in my relationship with Alice in, in the Americas in particular, the family is very, very important. So, right. Family is extremely important. And you, you do a lot of things for family that you wouldn't do for anybody else. And yet here is Jesus really being, in a sense, very dismissive of his family and saying, kind of, they're not very important to me. And if you were, it's like Alice said in her uh, testimony, I, I remember that day clearly I was standing by the refrigerator and she was standing by the kitchen sink when I said those words. I don't really care what you do, but I'm going to follow the Lord. And I can't, well, she's, thought about that and said, well, the Lord couldn't put us together to tear us apart, which he hasn't, obviously, and we're still together today. But um, <clears throat> I can't imagine what kind of shock that was to Alice at that point when I said those words and for me to just stand there and say them. And they just came out, just, just came out because she was having a lot of doubts about whether or not or why or how or, or what, what's this all about, etc. And uh, as <clears throat> she has said on a, a few occasions, that it, was the, it was the push that she really needed to get her going. And uh, I'm glad I was able to give her that push. I don't know whether she'd have taken it for anybody else, but these, these sorts of verses don't really compute with a lot of people in the world today. They, they don't really understand them. And a lot of churches, if these words are ever spoken, the people in the churches today, people who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, really could be very offended by this concept of 
somebody saying, Look, these people are more important than you. And really, we, we kind of have to do that uh, with, within ourselves when we get filled with the Holy Spirit is suddenly, unless your whole family is in the Lord, well, that's great. But even, even with that, there has to be something that's first in your life. And unfortunately, it's not your family. Uh, you know, your family comes pretty close second, perhaps. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know about your guns, Josh, but however, you'll get over it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's putting the question who is important and to whom is it important to whom is where is this importance placed in ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4 it's a, a verse i love to quote because it's a very it's a very important verse in the in this context but I, you can use it in a lot of contexts <coughs> And a lot of people in the world today don't believe that they've got souls. Uh, they don't believe that there's a God. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of people don't believe there's God, therefore they don't believe there's a devil. And say, well, the devil's fixed the whole show, hasn't he? He's got the whole works picked, out, picked up and sorted out. You know, he's tricked you into believing there's no God, so you don't believe in him either. But this, these verses, this one particular verse, says in Ezekiel 18 verse 4 says behold all souls are mine that puts mark 3 31 to 34 right in perspective all souls are mine and so Jesus was looking at the people at his feet listening to him and the counterpoint to that is his mother and siblings have come along and said, we need to talk to Jesus, send him out here. And Jesus said, no, I'm not going out there because you people are listening to what I've got to say. And he's more or less saying, they've all heard the story and they've done nothing about it. But you are hearing the story and you're living it, you're loving it, you're wanting to hear it. And so you are the people I am interested in, not them. If they're going to do something, they'll do something, but they've heard the story. They've heard it for years and years and years. And so all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father also, the soul of the Son is mine. And the soul that sins, it shall die. There's a whole lot more to that, uh, that passage of Scripture. And so we see Jesus bringing into perspective his love for us and sort of saying, I can love the others, I can still love the sinners, but if they don't want to follow me, then these who do are more important to me by far. Matthew 10, verse 37 to 39. A similar, a similar story, just put in a slightly different way. He that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That's really tough for people to hear. They don't, again, a lot of people in this world don't understand that. The not worthy of me is a very powerful word. If you look into it, it means you are not going to be taken account of. You're, you're of no account. Now, it's not a very nice thing to say. You walk up to somebody and look at them perhaps and, and uh, you might have had a little bit of a uh, difference of opinion with them and you say, then they turn and say, well, you're of no account to me anymore. Go away. Get lost. Get lost. Excuse me? Well, how do you think it makes me feel? Well, I don't know how it makes you feel. And obviously, I'm not too worried about that. But you need to fix it. So it's always left up to us to fix the problem. We're more the problem than the solution. Jesus is the solution. 
And here he says, if you love father or mother more than me, he's really saying, you might have already lost the vision. You might be in trouble already. You're not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that takes not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. And so what Jesus is saying here is, well, the next verse pretty much clears it up. He says, he that finds his life shall lose it. And we're going to lose our lives to Christ. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. So we're going to we're going to find life. And people, I got that back a little bit back to front. I'll explain that again. He that finds his life, and essentially what's being said there is, if find your life in the world, you've lost it. But if you lose your life and give it to me, you've found it. But he doesn't want part of your life. He wants your whole life. And he won't be satisfied with less than your whole life. In John 21, verse 15, famous verses. So when they had dined, and I can't imagine how Peter might have felt during this exchange. <clears throat> I think we get a bit of a glimpse into it. Words on paper, or whether they are not on paper, but words in a situation like this have, in a sense, no emotion. How often do you get, send an email to somebody and you really pour your heart in it, they get it and they say, yeah, so what? Because there's really no emotion in it. You, you might be able to put something in it that's not there, or you're, you're see, trying to find what is there but can't find that. You can't find the emotion that the writer has put into it. And this is a bit the same way. And perhaps put ourselves in Peter's place. And when they dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, Simon son of Jonah, you love me more than these? Had his other disciples there. Do you love me more than these? Peter was no doubt a little bit concerned about that question. Why would he ask that? He knows already that, Je that Peter already loves Jesus and he could be a little bit angry about that perhaps. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs, feed the new church, be a feeder of sheep. I want you, Peter, to just forget yourself and work for me and feed the lambs, feed the sheep in the church. And he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. So as the church grows, feed the sheep. Don't give up. Don't walk away from it. Stay the course. Be my son. Don't be the son of the world. And he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, you love me? And Peter was grieved that he had to ask this the third time. He's already told you twice. He was grieved because he said unto him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Do the work for me, Peter. Feed my sheep. Make me and my word the most important thing in your life and look after those that I've called. All of the set, the set of scriptures there all lead to that. They lead to the same thing. All of us, it doesn't matter whether you're in my position or Pastor Darrell's or Pastor Ben's, we've all got that job to do. And every time we go out and talk to somebody, 
we feed them something and we're doing the Lord's work. And he wants us to be feeders of sheep, feeders of lambs. <clears throat> and all the people said, Amen. Amen.